time for our sixth game of the day as Fnatic takes on Besiktas. And this is a really important one here. Let's look at Fnatic first. This is, a, this is big because TSM still has an opportunity to make it into that into the playoffs as well as Besiktas if they, if they win this game. I feel like Fnatic at this point should just be going really confident and comfortable in this match. They had a really great showing against SKT. I think they had that's, the best showing that anybody they had against the SKT. They had the best showing. And I think that going into Besiktas, where you kind of know where it's going towards, I think that they are just on paper the better team. And they should know that and just don't make any troubles and go really healthy into this game. Yeah, I also think that they're in a fantastic position because their top laner, Huni, is really stepping up. And we've talked about his importance. I've even had to revise my opinion on how good Huni is internationally. I was willing to give him the EU LCS, but he's really stepped up this tournament. Been an absolute powerhouse. Taking it to Myron, who, in my opinion, is a very solid top laner. And he's going up against Thaldren, who... Thaldren, he, we've already said he's a shot caller. If you can get in this guy's head and shake him up with some aggressive play, you might be able to really throw Besiktas off their game. Well, and, you know, we talk about or it's been joked about throughout the tournament, Besiktas could be a kaboom. Well, it's not even that. They still have a shot to make it into the semifinals. So how are they going to do that? I'm still hoping for them to actually come out on top of this one just because, similar to kaboom last time, they've got, they've got nothing to lose, you know. They didn't come here with many expectations, and I think that this could be the time to just show and really prove the whole world wrong. What I really liked that we talked about before was that even in their games that don't look so convincing, they're always playing to win. That's a trait that not many teams, even at the top level, have. You don't, like a lot of times the pressure gets to you and you forget, oh, what are we doing? Like just, just kind of turtle out and, and don't do anything. But they always play to win, and I really like that about them. And even the game against AHQ, where Thaldrin got camped on Cassiopeia, he had a huge CS lead on that Cassiopeia. I'm expecting him to hold his own against Huni. Yeah, and... Energy, I think, although he's not a monster of the mid laner, he is a really, really good mid laner. He almost solo killed Faker at one point in the game that they played against SKT. Right? His Diana, if it gets off the ground, it's going to be extremely scary, but we haven't seen that just yet. So if Thaldrin is able to get through the laning phase against Huni, and then Energy is able to take off in the mid lane, I think that's how they're going to win this game. And I think they could maybe even pull a Unicorns of Love and go with a surprise pick. <laughs> Poppy top lane, TF jungle, I'm... Uh, no, I thought you were going to say pull a UOL and lose. Uh, uh, oh, thank oh, you. Oh. Well, we won some of those games, uh, <laughs> but I think this might be a really great possibility. Maybe they have something prepared that we haven't seen yet. And maybe they have just looked at other regions, how they play here, maybe have a really good level one strategy. And I think we saw it against SKT. It can come to fruition if you follow it up really correctly. I think it's gonna be a quick game. Whichever side wins is gonna win very quick and very early. Yeah, well, we've talked about the lanes that could potentially go even. We've said that Doldrum might be able to stand up to Huni, who's a great laner. Energy might be able to stand up to Forbidden. I actually think they might have a winning lane match up here. The CS differential at, uh, for average, sorry, for the AD carries is 71 for Nardius and only 57 for Steelback. This guy is struggling to get over that one CS every couple of minutes. Uh, five CS every couple of minute mark. And I actually think that Dumbledoge is a lot to play for that one. We've seen that Yellowstar is extremely aggressive. He flashed in for the Krug steal, and that really was punishable. So if they're able to get a similar situation, get Nardius rolling, he might turn into the surprising carry because we're talking about a lot of the other lanes and the AD carry roll is very strong. I think for this game, Besiktas actually has the statistics and the numbers on their side, to be honest. But for Fnatic, they do have a good performance against SKT, you know, that kind of gets you, gets you rattled, gets you in a good mood to actually perform. Maybe not the fact that it was a kind of heartbreaking loss, but that's what both teams have going for yeah. them. Well, they had different kind of heartbreaking loss because you got to remember that in caveating my point about Nadius, he just came off the game with Death, where he was absolutely crushed. So Death really did take it to him. So they're bouncing back off different kinds of losses. But Shiktash, that really crushing, like just 20 minute all out bloodbath that EDG put on, and then the very close game. And I actually think it's harder to bounce back from the close game. I think that Bushiktas also has like this kind of wild card extra point where you don't know what exactly they are going to pull out. Um, and I also feel that Bushiktas, just in this position, has nothing to lose for. And that's really important. Like this kind of mindset, especially from us, when you are kind of the underdog, that can give you the moral boost and this can just give you the clarity in the game. I, I disagree on the point about the closer game is harder to back to bounce back from because 
I mean, I'm just going to pull in some of my experience here. When you're playing against teams that are much better than you, as long as you tell yourself this team is a better team than we were close to, that the team, then the team we're going to face. Like, I'll just even go to, like, ranked fives. When I'm playing against challenger ranked fives and I'm not a challenger player, and then we lose to them, and it's like, well, they're better than any other team that I'm going to face in the actual tournament I'm playing in, right? So do you go in with that knowing, and it's a bit of a confidence boost. Well, I, I think you, you detach yourself from such a heartbreaking loss. You're just like, oh, okay. Well, we're not at this level. Well, and that's and the thing. When you, you play, like, such a closed game, you're like, like, we're almost there, yeah, we're almost maybe. there. Are we, can we actually do this? Like, oh. No. Right, but it is entirely <laughs> about it's entirely it's about me the mentality mindset. of how of how you take it. And that's the thing. You you could go one way with it and say, you know, we should have won that lane, it's the most crushing defeat. You know, what do we do now? And, or you could take it as Irene was saying, this is the best team that we're gonna go up against and we gave them the best run for their money out of any of the teams in this tournament. That says something about our ability to play. And Fnatic was laughing a lot during the, lo the previous games that they were playing. They were having a lot of fun in their earlier game against EDG. Even Smiles they lost win that. games. No, they don't. <laughs> yes, no, they, they do. Don't. don't listen to crumbs, ladies and gentlemen. All right, well, as Besiktas set up, though, with their survival in this tournament on the line, we'll hear what it's like to not only play as the lone representative from the seven, uh, four, seven regions worldwide, but with the weight of over a century of Turkish athletic tradition on their shoulders as well. Bundan bir hafta önce Türkiye şampiyonuyduk. Ondan sonra 7 bölgenin de katıldığı uluslararası turnuvada, Wildcard turnuvasında birinci olduk. Wildcard'ı kazanıp daha doğrusu 7 bölgenin birincisi olmak gerçekten güzel bir duygu. Hani hem MSA'ya katılıyor olmak hem de bu 7 bölgeyi temsilen orada bulunmak gerçekten güzel bir duygu. Beşiktaş gibi köklü bir spor kulübünün Espor'da önce olması gerçekten çok büyük bir şey. Bir kere çok köklü bir taraftar grubu var. Ben çok uzun zamandır sahnede oynuyorum. Yani 2-3 yıldır zaten sahnede oynama tecrübesine alışkın bir oyuncuyum. Gerçekten ilk defa sahnede heyecanlandım. Heyecanlanmamam lazımdı ama heyecanlandım. Yani karşımızda öyle bir taraftar vardı ki sürekli beni heyecanlandırıyordu. 4000 kişinin önünde oynamak ve o 4000 kişinin Beşiktaş'ta olduğunu bilmek, bize desteklemesi gerçekten muhteşem şeylerdi. The fans are really nice and they're really supportive and just always rooting for us. That's really nice. So before I got to Turkey, I used to only compete in Czech Republic and that was like really easy. There was no competition or nothing. Now I got to Turkey and it's like better players, everything is bigger. We play in arenas and stuff. We can get to Valkar, we can get to Worlds. And it's like really exciting to be here. Beşiktaş Kulübü Türkiye'deki en köklü futbol kulüplerinden bir tanesi. 1903 senesinde kuruldu. Sayısızca birçok başarıya imza attı. Hatta bu kulübün çarşı adıyla bilinen bir taraftar grubu da mevcut. E, hatta yurt dışında birkaç maçta bir e, desibel rekorları kırmışlığı bile var. Hani bu kulübün bir parçası olmak, bu kulüp adına oynamak gerçekten çok güzel bir duygu. Facebook'a yazdım hepsine baktım mesela Fanatik'in. Bir tek Fanatik'in çok beğenisi var, 1 milyon üzerinde. Mesela ŞK Telekom yazdım, 50 bin falan herhalde daha fazla değil. Beşiktaş 5 milyondan fazla. Yok sadece Facebook'ta. Yani şu turnuva Türkiye'de olsa onlar bile korkar bence. Öyle bir taraftar kitleniz var. MSI'ye katılan bütün takımlar genelinde beni en çok korkutan destek oyuncusu Last Boy diyebilirim. Ee, koridoru çok iyi kontrol etti, ettiğini düşünüyorum. Ee, açıkçası Last Boy'a karşı oynamak e, benim için gerçekten büyük bir tecrübe olacak. Benim en çok severek izlediğim, idol aldığım ormancı İnsek. Çünkü İnsek'in ismini hareket, bir oyun hareketine verdiler. İnsek diye bir tabir var onun içinde. Bence bu gerçekten gurur verici bir şey. Linsey'in Linsey'in tekmesinin tadına bir bakmak benim için güzel olacağını düşünüyorum. 3 senedir neredeyse bu camianın içindeyim, e-spor camiasının içindeyim. Bu denli heyecanlandığım, bu denli yani gerçekten elimizin ayağımızın kesildiği bir maç oynamamıştım bu wildcard haricinde. Hani hem maçların heyecanı olsun hem arkamızdaki taraftar desteği olsun. Zaten bunun büyük bir kısmı taraftar desteğine bağlı da hani Gerçekten inanılmaz bir duygu ve bunun e, çoğunluğu Beşiktaş ismi sayesinde olmuş durumda. That was really intense watching Thaldren in front of the crowd, them cheering at his cue, you know. You hear stories about how crazy the crowd can be in Turkey from all the people that go back from the league league event and even them were saying how 
This fan club has broken decibel records in their cheering. I just absolutely love the enthusiasm and I get chills when I see Theoculus speak about <laughs> I was actually not supposed to get any kind of sweat or whatever. And <laughs> it was just so nice to see because we were in a similar position and it's just absolutely overwhelming once you sit instead uh, in front of such a great and loud crowd. It's really hard to contain. I was going to say, your organization has experience with having passionate fans. Uh, yeah, I was, And you must be able to relate to this quite well. Yeah, I, I just felt, I, I know what position you are in and what you're playing for. And that's, just, I think, why they perform like they perform. They have just a lot of enthusiasm and they show that. And that's why the games that we in the beginning thought, okay, this is, you know, maybe really one-sided. They actually make it funny, they make it interesting, and I really like to see. Well, they... now we're going to send it to the booth to check out the lineups, but first we'll hear from Besiktas's energy on how his lane opponent stacks up to the competition here in Florida. I think for Vivian is like, in this tournament, maybe middle of the pack. He doesn't have that much international experience. He's a rookie in LCS, so he's kind of new to the scene. Even though he favors Assassins, I think it will be an interesting matchup nonetheless. And we are back, guys. Noah Monte Cristo and Jad here. Fnatic versus Besiktas, and it's time to check out our starting lineups for our sixth match of the day. Of course, for Fnatic on the blue side, Huni in the top lane, Rain over in the jungle, Febivin in mid lane, Steel back at AD carry, Yellow Star at support. And of course, representing Besiktas, the winners of the International Wildcard Invitational. On the red side, we got Thaldron in the top lane, Theocles in the jungle. Energy, who we just heard from in the mid lane, Nardis and Eddie Carey, and of course, Dumble Doge on support. Dumble Doge. That's <laughs> I'm right. never going to get tired of that name. The wizard himself. <laughs> and so, we, we talked about it. We talked about the big implications for this match. It's going to mean a lot for both of these teams with who takes it. Yeah, normally you kind of, a lot of teams tend to overlook the international wildcard team, and yeah. Europe as a region knows not to do that now when Alliance actually ended up losing to. Kaboom in last year's Worlds. It can happen and it has happened. So Fnatic absolutely has to take this as the most serious game of them so far in this group stage. And what's great about this group stage too is that both of our last games actually mean a whole hell of a lot and can determine yeah. the fact that they're going to be tiebreakers because a lot of times in these round robins you get to some rather meaningless matches at the end, but we're really down to the wire in this one. Man, we really are, and we're moments away from getting into the picks and bans for this one. So going into it, we just saw Fnatic actually play a more competitive game against SK Telecom than anyone else has in this tournament. Do you think they can keep that kind of momentum going, even though they lost against a team like Bajiktas as we move into picks and bans here? Yeah, well, they had that discussion on the analyst desk.